Welcome to the Satellite Data Training Series presented by the Aerosol team at the NOAA NESDIS Center for Satellite Applications and Research. Today I'm going to provide an introduction to satellite remote sensing with a focus on defining key terminology that is necessary to understand and interpret satellite data products for the Earth's atmosphere, land, and oceans. Satellites use remote sensing to measure geophysical properties. Remote sensing is defined as the science of obtaining information about objects or areas from a distance without contact. Common examples of remote sensing include cameras, weather radars, and human eyes. Satellites measure light, electromagnetic radiation, at specific wavelengths. These measurements, called radiances, can be utilized directly to make observations about the atmosphere, land, or oceans. These types of products are called level 1b products. They are radiances measured by the satellite that have been calibrated and geolocated. For example, a meteorologist might use a level 1b visible wavelength product to monitor cloud formation associated with a severe thunderstorm. Satellite radiances are also used in scientific algorithms to derive geophysical parameters. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure or formula used to obtain a specific result. These satellite products derived from level 1b radiances are called level 2 products. Examples of level 2 products you might encounter are fire radiative power, aerosol optical depth, and volcanic ash detection and height. Level 3 products are level 2 products that have been averaged over time and or space. For example, the level 2 volcanic ash detection and height product might be generated daily. A level 3 volcanic ash product would be a monthly average of the level 2 products. Satellite measurements are made by instruments on the satellites called sensors. There are two main types of sensors illustrated by the graphics. Passive sensors measure radiation originating from the sun or earth, either reflected solar radiation or emitted terrestrial and atmospheric radiation. NOAA's VIRS and ABI sensors are examples of passive instruments. Active sensors emit the, their own radiation and measure what is reflected back by the Earth or atmosphere. LIDAR and RADAR are examples of active sensors. Spatial resolution is a satellite term that refers to the smallest geographic area that a satellite sensor can resolve. It is typically expressed as a distance. It corresponds to the pixel size at nadir, when the satellite is looking straight down at the Earth's surface, and it depends on the specifications of the satellite sensor. The higher the spatial resolution, the smaller the distance value, the more details that can be observed by the satellite, as illustrated by the graphic. Low spatial resolution, for example, 10 kilometers, means only large regional features can be resolved, such as cities, forests, and lakes. High spatial resolution, for example, 750 meters, means more detailed features can be resolved, such as individual smoke plumes from wildfires. Spectral resolution is a satellite term that refers to a range of wavelengths measured by the satellite. Sensors measure specific ranges of wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum, called bands or channels. The narrower the wavelength range of a band is, the higher the spectral resolution. A sensor with many narrow bands has high spectral resolution, while a sensor with fewer, broader bands has low spectral resolution. The higher the spectral resolution of a sensor, the more specific types of observations it can make. Spectral resolution is illustrated by the ABI sensor on NOAA's new generation weather satellites called the GOES-R series. The ABI has 16 relatively narrow spectral bands shown in the graphic. In comparison, the corresponding sensor on the previous generation of GOES had only five broad spectral bands. Temporal resolution is a satellite term that refers to how frequently a satellite observes the same area on the Earth. It's also called the revisit period or observation frequency, and it is expressed as a period of time. You can think of it as how long do I have to wait to see the next observation of the event or feature I'm interested in? The higher the temporal resolution, the smaller the specified time interval, the more frequent the observations. High temporal resolution, five minutes for example, means the satellite makes observations every five minutes or nearly continuously. 
Low temporal resolution, one day for example, means the satellite only makes one observation per day of a given location. Temporal resolution depends primarily on the orbit of the satellite. Geostationary satellites have high temporal resolution, while polar orbiting satellites have relatively low temporal resolution. So let's define what we mean by these two different types of orbits. First, geostationary satellites, also called geosatellites. They are in a high altitude orbit around 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At this altitude, the orbital period of the satellite matches the rotational speed of the Earth. As a result, geostationary satellites continuously observe the same area, the same hemisphere, as illustrated by the yellow shaded area in the graphic animation. Geostationary satellites have very high temporal resolution, but their spatial coverage is limited to the specific hemisphere they observe. They don't have global coverage. Geostationary satellites are typically weather satellites and communication satellites. Examples are NOAA's GOES East and GOES West satellites, and Japan's Himawari 8 and Himawari 9 satellites. Polar orbiting satellites are also called low Earth orbiting or LEO satellites because they are in a low altitude orbit, typically around 700 to 800 kilometers above the Earth's surface. As the name indicates, polar orbiting satellites orbit around the North and South Poles. The Earth rotates under the satellite, so every time the satellite makes a pass over the Earth, it observes a new area, as shown by the yellow shading in the animated graphic. Polar orbiting satellites have global coverage, but they have relatively low temporal resolution. Typically, they observe the same area no more than one to two times per day at low latitudes, sometimes less. There are more observations per day in polar regions because the satellite orbits overlap at high latitudes. Because of their global coverage, polar orbiting satellites are typically scientific research satellites, making global measurements. Examples include NOAA's SNPP and NOAA-20 satellites, and the European Space, Space Agency's Sentinel-5 precursor satellite. Like any type of measurement, satellite products have strengths and weaknesses. The many advantages of satellite observations include continuous monitoring on regional, hemispheric, and global scales, globally consistent observations to study trends and transport patterns. Satellites provide observations in locations where there are no ground-based measurements, and they provide a long-term observational record. But if you are going to be working with satellite products, you must keep in mind their limitations, including there are trade-offs between temporal, spatial, and spectral resolution. You can rarely get everything you want from one instrument. Geostationary satellites have high temporal resolution but lower spatial and spectral resolutions, making them more suitable for operational applications. In contrast, polar orbiting satellites have high spectral and spatial resolutions but lower temporal resolution, making them more suitable for research applications. In addition, unlike direct measurements, there is a substantial processing required for satellite measurements, not only to convert satellite remote sensing radiance measurements to geophysical values using algorithms, but also to visualize data as imagery. Now that you are familiar with the basics of satellite remote sensing, you may wish to explore other titles in the STAR Aerosol Team Satellite Data Training Series, including the Joint Polar Satellite System, JPSS, series and the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite VIRS sensor, which describes NOAA's polar orbiting satellites and VIRS sensor in more detail, and the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites R series, the GOES R series, and the Advanced Baseline Imager or ABI sensor, which describes NOAA's next generation geostationary satellites in the ABI sensor in more detail. There are also tutorials on how to navigate NOAA's Aerosol Watch and JSTAR Mapper websites where you can find prepared imagery from VIRS, ABI, and other polar orbiting satellite centers. Look for these videos on the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel.